Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Hey, how you doing? It's me, Todd Novak. We are not having a normal podcast as we usually do, but this is a broadcast of the podcast that we did at the Columbus Podcast Festival. I'm going to say podcast as many times as possible. (laughs) We did a live episode in front of a real live human audience, which was a first for us, and it was really fun, and I hope that we get to do more in the future. I wanted to give a special shout out to the people who put the, the, uh, the festival together, uh, that was uh, Brian Donny, Rob Thomas, William Mount, and Katie Thomas. And uh, without them, don't know that it would have happened. Uh, we're really happy to be able to do this in Columbus. It's you know it's a small town, but it's it's uh, it's jamming. It's got a great music scene. It's got a great art scene, and we're grateful that uh, people are active and and making things like this happen. So much thanks for for them for having us on and running it and making us not look like total idiots as best they could. I mean, a lot of that's really up to us. <laughs> uh, so this is me. Jared Brandon, Mike Trombley of Red House Electronics, and Tony Dudzik, the Pick Guardian, and we're on stage having a having a good time. This isn't a uh, the normal length podcast, uh, but it is um, uh, you know it's a shorter one, but it's cool. You'll like it, I hope. And next uh, episode, we will be back with a full on, full featured, full length, full frontal, normal guitar knobs episode. Thanks a lot for listening, guys. Hope you like it. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs, the guitar podcast about guitars, gear, pedals, amps, and the noise they make. Our guitar world is filled with so many incredible, passionate, smart, and gifted makers and players whom the Guitar Knobs personally would love to meet and talk with. But they are not from the typical big companies we are all familiar with. They're from the super small, unique companies that are making a huge array of amazing things. Imagine they all must have great stories around why they are doing their thing. So Guitar Knobs combined with their love of talking about guitars with friends and the opportunity to interview the people who are making, shaping, and playing the guitar world we are in, the Guitar Knobs podcast was born. Their goal is to provide great conversation, interviews, and a fair bit of nonsense for all of us guitar enthusiasts out there. Guys, let's bring them out to a warm round of applause. Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by These Knobs. These Knobs. Hey, everybody, you guys, thank you so much for being here. We do really appreciate it. We can't see actually anybody, which is comforting, uh, but we can hear you, and that's also comforting. So, uh, yeah, you heard our intro, and I referenced builders, and these are three local builders, and they are also knobs on the show. And today's show, we're not going to get super deep into the technical enthusiast world because everybody will probably get up and leave because they're like I have no idea what you're talking about but we are going to talk about some very a, a couple important things um, so I'm going to introduce uh, down to the to the from left to right wait <laughs> yes yeah from the, well anyway to my yeah, left yeah. go ahead Mike okay uh, I'm Mike Trombley owner and engineer at Red House Electronics located in Troy Ohio what do you make, Mike? Uh, I make guitar pedals. Um, so, you know, when you go to a live show, those guys that are making noise, uh, <laughs> I'm behind that. Yep. Yeah. Good. Jared. Jared Brandon. Um, I own a small company called Brandon Wall Pickups. I make uh, guitar pickups. And guitar pickups are basically, they're electromagnets and they're custom made. And they go underneath the strings and they... That's right. Thank you, Tony. And they uh, they pick up Perfect the vibrations and they <laughs> they send all that and you know through the knobs yeah and uh, then out of your amp. So uh, what I do it it uh, <clears throat> it starts with the string and the the vibration and then it you know and then it goes through his thing and comes out the amp. <laughs> That's what I do. Excellent. I'm doing Tony. It about ten years. Tony. And I am uh, Tony Dudzik. Uh, 
I own Pick Guardian Custom Pick Guards here in Columbus, and uh, I take large pieces of plastic and make small pieces of plastic. <laughs> I should have brought my show and tell because you just made two custom ones for my Les Paul special, yeah. which are spectacular, Sparkly. and I can't wait to put them on. Glad my name like is Todd Novak. I'm the host, the main host, or, or the, the person who does all the hosty stuff. And I don't make anything, but I'm a super enthusiast and a longtime player. And so today, this is a half hour show. We usually go for about an hour and a half. So <laughs> we definitely had to try to squeeze it down a little bit. I wanted to breach the topic of what was, what was the, the, the sort of first Holy Grail guitar and why? First Holy Grail guitar that you had to have and why. And so we're just going to discuss how that, you know, how that came about, what you did with it, did you get it, who inspired you, et cetera, and try not to run out of time because we'll probably get headlong into it. Got guitar players out there? Anybody? Any yes, all right. All right. <laughs> Very happy. You and try? if you don't, just play along. It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so just nod your head, yes. Yeah. Jared, go ahead. Okay. Well, my dad was a guitar player, and you know, my dad was my hero growing Time's up. up. Mike? All right. <laughs> All right, so my favorite guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jared. I yeah. am so sorry. <laughs> so uh, what was I talking about? Uh, Your dad. So I wanted, dad. To be, I wanted to be like my dad, so I saw old pictures, and he had a black Les Paul um, custom, and that's a black Les Paul Gibson. And it's got the gold hardware. And For it's reference, got tell tell uh, tell the audience out here who who other, who might else play Les Paul custom. Robbie Krieger did in the Doors. In the um, last ten years, <laughs> twenty years. <laughs> uh, slash um, slash there's slash. <laughs> well, not I, I. I don't think I've seen him play one of those, but um. Well, Les Paul, anyways. Let's yeah, just slash, generalize yeah. it to Les Paul. Okay, right. so hey, this slash, is the fancy the version. Paul. So my dad had the fancy version, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so I wanted it because he had it, and he told me he said, "Man, that's the best guitar I ever had because of the action when you press on the strings. The, the strings are so close to the fretboard, and it's just easy. It's like butter to play, you know. So, of course, I wanted one of those, and." Um, did so I got it? one. Yeah, I got one. I mean, actually, I I found an American-made Gibson Les Paul Custom while I was stationed in Korea because uh, I, <laughs> I served. So I, I found it there, and I traded in this double-neck Epiphone Jimmy you Page You were doing modeling thing. in Korea? Is that... <laughs> no. <laughs> was that North or South Korea? Uh, that'd be the <laughs> South. So, no, I was, I was an MP over there in the Army. And uh, there was one guitar shop that was close by, and that was it. And so I went there to familiarize myself with home because I didn't know what anything else said there because it's all, you know. And uh, I found it. it. It was like a 1979, and it looked just like the one my dad had. It was worn. It was played, and I, I loved it because of that. It what just color felt was it? so good. It was black. It was a black Les Paul custom. Wow. Those either came in black or white. Right. That was it. Or sunburst. That's right, in the 70s. You're right. So I finally had it, and I think I pawned it off for some cash <laughs> later on. <laughs> to buy I, I was poor. <laughs> Near and dear to your heart, clearly. <laughs> but, uh, well, but you I got it. That's cool. But the, the one I really wanted was my dad's. So when I, I came home from the service and... My brother was in college, and the guy that my dad sold his to back in the you know seventies, mm -hmm. he was actually uh, he he saw my dad at some function at the college my brother was at because her her daughter his daughter was going there too, so I said, Dad, call the guy up and see if he still has your guitar. I want your guitar. You know he did, and well, I don't know if he actually called him, but he said, No, he doesn't have it. He probably just said that, so uh, you know. Wouldn't have to buy that guitar from him, but uh, anyway, that's that was my dream guitar. That is still probably my number one favorite guitar. Anybody out there got uh, Les Pauls? Any Les Pauls? Any 
Give yeah. someone's phone. They all raise their hand. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they cost yeah. a couple of bucks. Yeah, Mike, how about you? All right, so uh, my first one, uh, I say first one because I ended up having a second one. And <laughs> uh, initially when I started my, I, I mentioned this on the old uh, previous podcast, but like my parents got me like a, it was like some kind of star cast or something, you know, like one of those like Walmart guitars. Right. They got me one of those simple Walmart guitars and I started, I think the first song I learned was like a White Stripes song. And I was like, this is terrible, you know. <laughs> Which is ironic because that's actually huge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the, and those so airline guitars. Yeah, yeah. And yeah and then I was like, "This is terrible." Yeah. This ain't a rocker's guitar, you know. This is a Walmart guitar. So I ended up. Um, I went to Guitar Center, and I seen it there, and it was. I just wanted a Les Paul, you know. Like every rock star had a Les Paul. <laughs> Does anybody you know? out there have Les Pauls? <laughs> <laughs> Lots yeah. of hands. Everybody raise their hand again. That's we amazing. had forty <laughs> people raise their hands. <laughs> <laughs> There's two hundred out there, just yes, so it, that. Yeah. I see <laughs> ten more people raise yes. their hands back there. We didn't, I didn't see that, but one um, strat guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> and so, uh, so anyways, we go to Guitar Center. I end up finding the guitar. Like you know, it was a Les Paul, and I was like, oh dude, that's sick. You know, and it was, it was a starter. It was like three hundred bucks, but um, I say that like you know that's like cheap, but. Um, it was 300 bucks, and then my um, I was like, I want that, and so I told my uh, you know I told my stepdad I was like, hey man, um, I was like, if you if you buy me that guitar, I'll start playing guitar because I had the Starcaster, you know, it was just hanging out in my um, room. But then I was like, if you buy me that guitar, I'll start playing guitar. And so um, he, of course he was like, I'm not gonna pay for it, <laughs> you know. And uh, I was like, well, I'll throw in half. So we threw in half. Um, I got the guitar, but then I had to go on to a family, a family trip the next day. And so I'm playing it at night, and then I go to put it on the stand. And here it ends up sliding off the guitar stand. It hit the entertainment center <laughs> from my room, <laughs> you know, or for the TV. And the headstock, uh, where all the, you know, tuners are, ended up cracking. So uh. my dream guitar broke <laughs> right in front of my face. Uh. So, yeah. So that was, you know, just having my dream crushed right in front of me. That was beautiful. And then, um, but then I got home and, you know, returned it to Guitar Center after I got back from the family trip. Um, and I played that for like two weeks and then I was onto a new dream guitar, which uh, is a guitar that I have now. <laughs> is a the show's called What Is Your Dream Guitar? Yeah, <laughs> it just keeps going. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, it's the Fender Stratocaster, which you guys probably know is like Jimi Hendrix's guitar. You know, um, I don't know, so many iconic people Steve played it. Ray Vaughan. Oh, Steve yeah. Ray Vaughan. Yes. There's yeah, a couple of guys, guys out there. Handful of them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so it was the Strat. And um, and then I ended up, of course, throwing in money with my parents to get the, <laughs> get the Strat. And uh, I got it a couple years ago and still have it. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, if you like Strats. So... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm the only guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for that. That was enlightening. Yeah, I like him too. Very like touching story. Tony. Tony. <laughs> yeah. Tony. I, I'm a little bit older than these guys, but um, uh, one of the first guitars that I remember ever saying, what that is, that's like the coolest guitar I've ever seen, was from old uh, old movies and old photographs of the Beatles. And the one in most in particular was the George Harrison 12-string Rickenbacker. And that was just like my dream guitar to have. It started off this continuing sickness of buying 12-string electric guitars. I think I've got more 12-string electric guitars than many people. Well, but well, strings, man. It's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of Yeah, they're fun to change, too. Yeah. But, um, but, but I finally... Uh, I, I, certainly couldn't afford one that was made in 1964 like George's, but I, I did uh, find a, uh, a reissue of his particular guitar uh, probably about five or ten years ago. And uh, so that was kind of my dream come true. Uh, I just loved the look, the sound, uh, and, and that's that's what I was all about. What, co what color was it? It's a fire glow or it's a sunburst that goes from from uh, red to the on the outside to natural on the inside so and that's a white pick garden right or, uh, or yeah george's had a wide white white guard yep now they went to black ones for a while right 
Well, John Lennon always played a, a, a black, but he played a different model. It was a, a 325, right? Uh, which is a smaller body, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, but John also played a fire glow one, but that's a different story. Now, that has a pretty skinny <laughs> neck on it, doesn't it? Uh, they can be difficult to play, and a lot of players don't like Ricks because uh, what we call first position, the first three frets, uh, it's very narrow at that end, and if you've got meat hooks like this, <laughs> it, it makes it a little more difficult you to play. Let no. alone yeah. 12 <laughs> strings. Yeah, 12 on strings. That tiny well, little... Yeah. Like, well, you can't, can't you can't miss. Well, you can, yeah, <laughs> you can. <laughs> I've done plenty of that. Do you still have that guitar? That is that is one that's in the permanent collection. That's awesome. Hey, for our listeners, what kind of music would you play with, with that guitar? Uh, very jangly music. So <laughs> things like the Beatles, the Birds, uh, hey, Mr. Jim R.E.M. Hey, uh, and where's that? That You want to uh, explain a little bit where the jangle comes from? Well, it's it's because you've got uh, on a twelve string guitar. The answer is your heart, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think first you should explain the bands yeah. <laughs> for our young listeners. Yeah. <laughs> so a twelve string guitar is is basically set up that uh, the first four strings there's an octave string. So you've when you play one string, you essentially you're playing two notes, uh, same uh, note. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's an octave. I, I'm wasting my money on, on, on guitars. I could just bring Jared along, I guess. <laughs> just tickling, uh, tickling. Uh, He'll go through uh, all of you. So, so, so you get kind of, you know, it's it's this cascading sound. I mean, the the probably the best example is the opening chord to Hard Day's Night, which I'm sure almost everybody's familiar with. By who? And Mr. Tambourine Man's a <laughs> pretty close the, second, the Beatles right? and Mr. Oh, Tambourine Man. So it's yeah. kind of that the birds. That, yeah, the, it just has those high overtones, but. Unfortunately, now that I'm old enough to know that the myth is wrong, I used to think that was just George Harrison playing the 12-string guitar on that opening riff. Well, it turns out it was also George Martin playing the same note on the piano. So (laughs) (laughs) sometimes it's like, like, you know, everyone loves hot dogs, but no one wants to see how they're made, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect analogy. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about it. (laughs) <clears throat> Todd, yes. Tell us about your. Oh time. yes, um, my. I, I think that when I first got the 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 super bug and got really got hooked on guitar and and what this thing that I was going to chase would be uh, would have been seeing uh, she sells sanctuary video. Uh, way back from the cult, and Billy Duffy, who was my early guitar hero, uh, I learned to play listening to him, and he had this big, beautiful Gretsch White Falcon. And as a young lad, I could not possibly afford <laughs> a, 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 I'd never even owned a guitar, but I was like, okay, whatever this is, I got to do this. I need one of those, apparently. And... I traded a skateboard for a really, really cheap, you know, like a like a um, a Walmart, you know, Walmart type Walmart, guitar. Yeah. A Sears. Sears guitar, then, yes, yeah. for the older folks. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and so I I traded that, but wait, just a little backstory. That yes. Gretsch guitar. How much is that? Now? Yeah. That one? Yeah. Oh, geez. Because I know the White Falcon. It's like the Cadillac of guitars. It it kind of is. Um, How much would something? I mean, go? Y- well, a new a new White Falcon is probably three thousand. Yeah, but I, are you talking it's about like a the vintage yeah, sure, one from that year? Yeah, yeah, Ooh, I think vintage, you're up in the yeah. sevens and tens, probably. Yeah, easily. Um, so like college tuition. It's a car. Yeah. Well, and he has his own signature models now, and they're mostly black, which are cooler. But anyways, at the time I was like, <laughs> hey, that Falcon. white one, I want that. So I got a. Uh, sun, uh, a, a, a sunburst guitar, a sunburst Les Paul style, ch- super cheap guitar, and uh, promptly bought a can of spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> and That's so punk rock, though. <laughs> well, I was a crafty kid, so I was like, well, all right, I'm just going to... This can't be this hard, right? And Famous the, last words. <laughs> the, the funny thing about um, people who build guitars, they're called luthiers, and... Uh, People who try to build guitars who don't call themselves luthiers, where they kind of stop is at the finishing part. 
most people, they're like, yeah, man, I built this. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, but I sent it off for finishing because screw that. <laughs> um, and finishing is just either the paint or the stain and the the, uh, the epoxy, and, or not the epoxy, but the, um, the poly over the top and, and all of the buffing and polishing. And it's, it's really easy to do wrong. And, it's, and if you're doing a black one, forget about it. I mean, but you need to build a paint booth at home to do it right. Well, I had my garage in a coat hanger, and that was working out just right. <laughs> and the weather's got to be yeah. right too, by the way. But I, I, uh, I did, I did some cool taping off, and and so I spray painted it. And I didn't know anything about paint at the time, because I was really young and hadn't had a lot of experience. So I kept painting it, because <laughs> I was like, well, this is gonna get shiny pretty soon. It must need more. So I kept putting it more and more on, and then I realized. Um, I noticed on my friend's guitar, his kind of had this like this layer of of not paint, and I was like, "What's this?" And and it's all, oh, it's clear coat. I gotta go get some clear coat. So then I started spraying it with tons of clear coat. Well, clear coat turns yellow real quick if you do a couple of coats. And I was like, "No, no, no, no! My beautiful white guitar is turning yellowy." And so then I sanded it, but I didn't sanded it too soon. So then it was like sanding rough, and I just it was yeah, awful. Like sanding Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I ended up with a really, really ugly, really ugly white guitar that yeah. was that I still ended up learning how to play cult songs on. But did you put stickers on it to cover it? Up? I no, I didn't. But I would. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, anyways, that was uh, that was my pretend Billy Duffy, you know, up in my room by myself, and. Uh, that's how I learned how to play guitar on a super crappy, spray painted white piece of crap guitar. Anyhow, um, usually in our normal show we have a couple of segments, and um, what what's the time we got? What we got? Fifteen? Holy, Holy mackerel! This thought. is the long set. So, what was your second? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. We got we got plenty. So so another aspect that we that we typically go through, um, we have a, a, a thing we do called "Would You Rather," and that's when we just kind of go around and, and we we produce a question and we get the information on why. So for this "Would You Rather," I'm, I'm glad we had time because we did plan for this. Um, I thought we'd go super long, so I've been m watching my phone over here. But um, and all the questions from the audience were was has been delaying this. So, um, <laughs> how many Les Paul owners are there? Again? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the this, the would you rather is going to be drum roll. Okay. Would you rather rather rather? Yeah, with the, with the effects, I like that. That's right. Uh, would you rather have Tony's? Guitar, Rickenbacker. His his twelve string, I brought visual aids his twelve string today. Rickenbacker, or Mike's Hendrix style Stratocaster. Oh, good <laughs> audience participation! I love yes. it. Rickenbacker. He pictures though, that's no fair. <laughs> okay, so let's let's go around. And Jared, who, what are you going with? Oh well, I've never owned a Rickenbacker, and. I own about five or six, seven, something like that, strats. Yes. So I got to go to the Rickenbacker because I don't have one. <laughs> yeah. What? I got to go with it. Because apparently go he hates it. strats. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love strats. <laughs> yeah. But I already have enough. Oh, true. I want a Rickenbacker. Yeah, I feel you. Okay, I'll, so I'll Mike, you it. can't pick your own guitar. So what <laughs> would you rather? <laughs> <laughs> I choose your punk rock guitar. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. Can I, can I throw that in there? That would actually be really cool. Yeah, you can yeah. throw that in there. Uh, no, nah, I'm fine. You know, actually, I actually really like the Rickenbacker. I yeah, think it's, I think it's a beautiful I think it's guitar. A smart move. Except for for me, they can be hard to play though. At Why? I just everyone that I've played, the action's been terrible. But I probably didn't have the right person. What's up with the shiny pick guard too? You mean What's the fretboard? Yeah, I'm sorry, the fretboard. Yeah. What's up with that? Nah, it's the, the 60s, man. <laughs> That's what they do. So a highly polished maple maple uh, fretboard. Rosewood. Finished rosewood. On yeah. yours? Yeah. Oh, okay. They all are. Is it shiny, too? Oh, yes. Yeah. Huh. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's it's not common on a guitar. That's yeah. why I brought that up. Yeah. Very dull guitar. Okay. Tony? 
Well, Rickenbackers are an acquired taste, and they are difficult to play. They are sometimes painful as a live guitar. <laughs> I, I have several, but um, they, um, in because that was, of course, my first choice, I'm going to go with a Telecaster. What? The Telecaster. Wait a minute. There was no Telecaster. The workhorse. I I don't even care. What about the Strat? I'm I'm writing my own script here. Can he not do the Strat? I've got 15 minutes, and I'll tell you what. I chose a hard playing guitar. (laughs) The Telecaster. Now, here's here's an interesting fact. I'm picking a bass then. A little little tidbit. Um, A lot of (laughs) bands who play Rickenbackers live, bands like R.E.M., there's a, there's a lot. A lot of the recorded so-called Rickenbacker sounds that you hear are actually Telecasters being played in the studio. Uh, Telecaster is uh, Leo Fender's first guitar. It came out in 1951. It is, in my opinion, the perfect guitar. It has changed very little. It is still being produced today. Um, so that's the ultimate guitar to have. And I, yeah, I, I, that, that would be my choice. Tommy Tedesco, he was the Wrecking Crew at uh you know in in los angeles yep that his telly is on numerous albums numerous bands numerous 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 yeah i'm not gonna agree i'm not gonna i'm not gonna agree i'm not gonna (laughs) disagree with you i mean that's i gotta know though strat or rickenbacker no telly i'll take the rickenbacker over a strat of course all right so many haters (laughs) <laughs> Except for our 20 Strat fans back there. Hey, yeah. I own Stratocasters, man. I love them. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's it's widely known on our podcast that I really can't stand a Stratocaster. <sighs> so <laughs> I'm right going one. with the Rickenbacker, yes. too. Ah. Um, but uh, I, I love the idea of actually having a 12. I've never owned a 12 string, but I think it would be pretty fun to, to, to play with. I, I'm heeding your warnings about a uh, about live situations mm. um, and the tuning kind of scare me but yeah that, that's a lot to deal with well when you have your poly tune you'll be okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's a new pedal i gotta get oh there's we can go like way way deep on stuff <laughs> what's but the, what? what's the first song you would play on a 12 string oh geez i Anybody? You know, i don't I, I, tesla love song I don't even know. So I'm, I'm not like California. a 12 string guy. Come that's on, what I mean. true. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there, that's good. That. Uh, yeah. But that's so basic, though. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but that's the first thing you think of when you pick up a 12 string and you're a guitar player. It's the beginning of Hotel California. Uh, sure. I don't think that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> well, yeah. Apparently, we didn't think that because that was. And I was choice. alive then too. I'd probably go. With, <laughs> yeah. I I played. Tony was like 50 when that song came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Wish uh, you were here. Uh, no, I'd go my war black flag. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that <laughs> on a 12 string. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, anyways, as we are wrapping up, um, I just wanted to give each of the, these guys um, just an opportunity to uh, say a little bit about things that they're working on. Because, like I said, the show is um, we focus on builders. We interview builders from all over the country. We're breaching out, uh, br- breaching, branching out into the world. We are downloaded in over 80 countries now. And... Um, uh, you know, music is an international language, and it's coming through for us. So um, when we are interviewing makers, uh, we, we usually get about an hour and a half with them, and these, that's how these guys ended up um, on the show. Um, I actually found Brand, uh, Jared at, at his Brandon Wound table at a guitar show, and <laughs> he was standing there at this little tiny table. He's, he's about 6'9", just in case you haven't seen him stand up. But Flip the nine. His, his, his arms are standing cross leg, you know, crossed, and, and, and I just went up to him and I said, what's, what's your deal? And he's like, well, I make pickups. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, got a, I got a live one. And uh, we, we became friends. And uh, he's got a vast knowledge of uh, classic guitars and classic, mu- classic rock music. And uh, so he's a, he's a super valuable asset. Thank you. And um, Mike Trombley, we, we, I ran into, um, I spent an awful lot of time on Instagram, and that's where sort of the guitar world blooms right now. Um, and so I, I find a lot of, anything I find interesting, I follow. 
I, I and I don't mean follow by like oh I click follow hey I <laughs> I dig way deeper and I f- try to find out what's this what is this person or company about who's behind it and I like to focus on the people that aren't getting the spotlight necessarily smaller builders who are making amazing things like Mike Trombley he's not there's a lo- there's a lot of people out there who make guitar pedals um, you can buy kits to make guitar pedals he designs the circuitry to go into his guitar pedals, which is a really different thing, and is a wicked smart kid with um, uh, with some awesome products behind it. And so that's that's uh, yeah. You want to say where 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 they can check you out, and I'll I'll hit you. Don't worry. Oh, um, yeah. You guys can uh, check me out uh, on uh, RedHouseElectronics.com. Uh, and then I got some YouTube videos up. Um, I'm just yeah, I'm I'm around in the Ohio area. Uh, like I said, I'm based out of Troy, Ohio. So um, all my products though are handmade, hand designed. Um, yeah, so everything from top to bottom. And they're top. they're smart, which is a, a key factor. Yeah. Jared. No, I was just gonna add. Um, uh, I really loved Mike's backstory. So if you ever have time to listen to his uh, interview. Yeah, uh, I'll get to the I'll get to where they can sure. get all that in just a second. Tony, Tony, you it, didn't give me all the. Uh, I, I'm the I'm working on it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm working no on love. it. Tony's a Tony very has a little smart tiny guy. shop. <laughs> Tony's got a really tiny shop, and I by I mean tiny, I mean it's literally the like the corner of an actual building. It's right down the road. The it it yeah. might be, and um, full of magic though. He makes he makes uh, pick guards, which is. Something that when you when you get a guitar, it's one of the first things you can do to actually just make it your own. And he does custom ones, which is unique. And he's been doing it a long time, and he does it very very well and very quick. And uh, and he has a huge amount of knowledge about um, guitars and their uh, you know all the history and the origins. And as you can you know he he. He rifled off a whole bunch of stuff that was uh, that would typically fall uh, in our normal podcast on the floor because we'd be <laughs> yakking about other stuff. But I'm glad you shared that with us. So where can they find you? Uh, it's pickguardian.com. Um, that's my website. Uh, but I'm, you know, at Weber and High. <laughs> that's, yeah. where you can, that's where you really can find yeah. me. <laughs> but right next to the hot dog stand. Yes. Yeah, um, and then so yeah, if you want to listen to more of the Guitar Knobs, uh, we are at theguitarnobs.com. Uh, sorry, the guitar, yeah, theguitarnobs.com. And uh, we're all over all of the social channels, typically, um, that, that you are all on. And we record right here in Columbus, Ohio. I love finding people that uh, build in Ohio. I feel I feel like Columbus and Ohio is kind of like this onion that I keep peeling. I'm not an Ohio native. I've only been here about uh, seven years, and I I, I just love on. Unco- I feel like the Hewell Hauser sometimes of uh, uh, which he's a California. It might be lost on you guys, <laughs> but anyways, um, he discovers things in the state, and uh, I I love the fact that I get to discover so much. Um, so guitarnobs.com you can listen to each one of these guys podcasts uh, their interviews that we did with them and um, I really appreciate you guys being here and hope to talk to some of you that's it thanks guys thank you thank you well that's it for these knobs please visit us at our website at theguitarnobs.com for episodes, news, and guest profiles. You can get all social with us on our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash guitar knobs. Give us a tweet at guitar underscore knobs. And check out our gallery on Instagram at guitar knobs.